everybody! It's my fault. Uh, <laughs> well, welcome everybody. This is my favorite day of the month, actually, because I love the life skills class so, so much. So, welcome. I'm so, so happy to see you all here. And like Dylan said, you know, uh, there is a biblical reason that we should be healthy. And I love that the Bible always points us to being better to being getting, sorry, getting better and better. <laughs> um, and not only just in biblical knowledge, but literally in every aspect of our life. So I'm super, super excited, excited to talk about health today. And I just want to welcome you all here. Okay. All right, guys, we're going to say one more quick prayer just to get God involved here. And then we're going to dive into a couple things. So let's pray. Uh, Father, thank you so much for today, God. Grateful to be healthy enough to get here tonight, Father, to learn about health. And uh, God, I do pray that you open up our hearts and our minds to be humble before your word, but also to be humble to uh, just learning some things tonight, God. As a Christian, God, we never stop learning. We never stop growing. And so, God, I pray that that is our goal every single day, to get better and better and better for you, Father. And so, God, I pray that we learn some things tonight that we can apply practically to our life, Father. Uh, thank you so much for being with us, God. Thank you so much for everything that you're doing in each of our lives, God. And uh, we love you so much, Father. We love you, and we're grateful for everything you're doing. God, we love you. In Jesus' name, we Thanks. Amen. Awesome. All right, guys. So, the, uh, the first test was, uh, was at the table over there. Well, what, look, 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 look down at your plate. What do you have on your plate? If you have, uh, you've got some cake on there, well, that was the first test. It's, hey, that's what, that's what God does to us. Sometimes, sometimes he puts us in situations where it's like immediate test. You got to flee. You got to run. Amen. Well, I'm going to start you guys off with a scripture in 1 Timothy. Turn with me over to uh, 1 Timothy chapter 4. If you don't have a Bible, turn, get, share with your neighbor. Bust out your electrical, phone, Bibles, whatever you got going on. First Timothy chapter 4 and verse 8. It says, For physical training is of some value, but godliness has value for all things, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. And so the, the truth about physical training is that it does have some value. And it only has some value is because our physical lives are extremely short. We all know that. Eternity is very long. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you should go and eat everything in sight. You know, we have, we have, to, we have to hold ourselves off on the cake sometimes, you know. Because life is short, eternity is long. But we can't just write everything off that's physical, right? Because we live in a physical world, and we have to operate as a disciple or as a Christian in a physical body. So we have to make sure that we take care of our physical selves, right? And so the spiritual and the physical, you can't just neglect one or the other and expect to be good. Like, you're going to, you're going to suffer the consequences if you neglect your, your physical self or your spiritual self, because it's completely tied together. And so that's what we have to learn tonight. How can we be effective disciples, healthy disciples, so that we can have the most energy, the most vibrance, the most everything else so that we can take the world for Jesus. Because I don't know about you guys, but there's 18 or whatever million people in the city. That takes a lot of energy. That takes a lot of effort. That takes a lot of passion and zeal and everything else that comes with being healthy. And so with that, guys, I'm going to let Emma share a couple things here. Okay. Well, I love what um, Dylan shared because we do have to t take care of the body that God gave us here on earth. Um, I think of the scripture that you shared on the last life skills. It was in 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 23. Um, and it, it said that we, I'll read it. It says, now we, may God himself, the God of peace, make you pure, belonging only to him. May your whole self, spirit, soul, and body be kept safe and without fault uh, when our Lord Jesus Christ comes. <clears throat> and so um, our whole self, that includes our body. You know, our health is... Um, so important. And I want to read verse Roman, Romans, verse 12. No, Romans chapter 12. Oh. I'm so sorry, you guys. Oh. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and pro proper worship. Um, and so our bodies have always 
been intended to be used to worship God, right? We use our bodies to worship through singing, um, through praising, through sharing the gospel, studying the Bible with people, serving people. Um, And so, um, you know, amen, we get a new body in heaven, but God has given us this one right now to take care of and to worship him with. Um, And don't we want to do that in an excellent way and and the way that he desires us to worship him. And so we can't be our best if we're not honoring uh, God with our bodies, through our bodies, through keeping our bodies healthy. We can't make disciples if we aren't, if we don't have the energy to do so, if we're just lethargic and, you know, not eating the proper meals meals that we need to. Um, And I also love 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 19 through 20. It says, do you not know that your bodies are the temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. I'm just going to read the message version as well because I really, really love it. It says, or didn't you realize that your body is a sacred place, the place of the Holy Spirit? Don't you see that you can't live however you please, squandering what God paid such a high price for? The physical part of you is not some piece of property belonging to the spiritual part of you. God owns the whole works. So let people see God in and through your body. Can people see that God is with you through just looking at you? And not just the radiance of having your quiet time, but literally through your physical, how you take care of your physical self. Um, And today, I really, really just hope that you leave feeling inspired that no matter like how old you are, where you're at in your health journey, that you can actually be better. I think we all like have this thought that, oh, our high school self or like our younger self was like our peak. But I want to show you, actually want to show you in the scriptures that this does not have to be the case. Come on. In Joshua 14, um, verses 10 through 11, it says, Now then, just as the Lord promised, he has kept me alive for 45 years since the time he said this to Moses while Israel moved about in the wilderness. So here I am today, 85 years old. I am still as strong today as the day Moses sent me out. I'm just as vigorous to go out to battle now as I was then. So you guys, it is possible that we can be stronger today or even in the future. We should be getting stronger and stronger, actually. Um, It's possible for us to be even healthier today and in the future than we are right now. And so I just want to inspire you that um, this is Joshua, and he was stronger at 85 than he was at 40. So um, anyway, the best is yet to come. Everybody, don't lose hope. Awesome. A couple of things. Turn over to uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. That was some good stuff. That was some good stuff, guys. I hope, I hope you got everything that she said memorized for the, te- for the test afterwards. There's not. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just kidding, but you should memorize it. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3, it says, It is God's will that you should be sanctified, that you should avoid sexual immorality, that each of you should learn to control your own body in a way that is holy and honorable, not in passionate lust like the pagans who do not know God. And so in the, in the Greek here, the word used for passionate is pathos, and it means an affliction of mind or emotion. And then in the Greek here, the word for lust is epithemia, and it means desire or craving or longing for what is forbidden. So it's interesting the way it puts this. So God wants us to learn. So he says we have to learn to control our bodies, right? He doesn't just say it's going to come like all of a sudden naturally. He says you need to learn to control your body. So what is learning? Like, that takes some effort, right? Learning anything takes effort, it takes time, it takes energy, it takes intentionality. It takes a certain discipline in your life to learn how to control your body, right? And so that is what God desires from us. If we know that God desires that from us, then we have to, all of us in this room, ask ourselves, How in control am I? How in control am I of my emotions, of my desires, of my impulses, of any of that stuff? We have to ask us, how in control am I? And are you willing 
to learn to control yourself. Because that's what God ultimately desires, is he wants to have full control over us so that he can use us as, like Emma said, the scripture, as a temple. He wants to be living inside of us and operating us, you know, so we can help people. And so we're going to have uh, Isaiah and Sarah talk about a few different things here. Isaiah's going to talk about fitness. Sarah's going to talk about healthy lifestyle, diet, all those different things. And then uh, after that, we're going to take a little short break and come back with a song and have the second half of tonight. Uh, but ultimately, why we, live, why we live biblically healthy is so that we can ultimately go out and help other people. Because we need it, guys. We have to be disciplined enough so that we can go out and help other people also to understand God, to be disciplined enough to be a Christian and to all the other things that God calls us to. So with that being said, we're going to have Isaiah come up here and then Sarah, and then we'll take a little short break and get into the second half of the night. So take it away, girl. Amen. Amen. I want to start you off with some statistics. Oh, boy. All right. 39% of adults 18 or older are overweight. This comes out to about about 1.9 billion worldwide. 1.9 billion people worldwide are overweight. 650 million would be considered obese. The results of this sort of lifestyle is cardiovascular diseases, hypertension, strokes, heart, heart attacks. Uh, diabetes, musculoskeletal disorder, so this is osteoporosis and any sort of uh, bone sort of issues later on in life, and then even some forms of cancer. All of this is preventable. Now, if you had a pill that you could take every day of your life and it made you look the best that you possibly could, would you take it? If it gave you the, the, the best sleep that you ever had, you were never hungry, it was the best thing that you could possibly do, you would take it every day. Well, unfortunately, that pill doesn't exist. However, exercise will give you a lot of those same benefits. As a matter of fact, because exercise is not, it would, it is legit, if it was a pill, is the most important pill you could possibly take. Now, here's the thing. Even if it was in pill form, there are those that would not take it. Exercise is not about the the talent of the things that you can do or the way that you do look, but it's about your behavior. 2 Timothy 2 Verse 4 to 7. Now this scripture, I could have went with all of the different scriptures about physical fitness or athletes and all of these different things, but let's be real. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter what you look like. What matters is your behavior, and that's what the Bible wants to teach us. 2 Timothy 2, verse 4, it reads... No one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Similarly, anyone who competes as an athlete does not receive the victor's crown except by competing according to the rules. The hardworking farmer should be the first to receive a share of the crops. Reflect on what I am saying, for the Lord will give you insight into all this. Your behavior is what is going to dictate your fitness or your health. I mean, we don't care about how fit you are, but what is healthy, right? I, as a personal trainer myself, my, my biggest thing is when I'm training people, I'm not trying to get them to do the, the, the coolest things. I, I, I honestly, and this might be to my own detriment, is I don't really care how good you look. But what I want to do is change your behavior, change your mindset about what it means to actually be healthy because in this way, it transfers to every other part of your life. What does that sound like? It sounds like if you're a Christian, that sounds like discipleship. 
that sounds like living for God. So therefore, we shouldn't look at our fitness as just something that, you know, we do because we see it on Instagram, right? Or because we want to look a certain way, but we do it because it is a behavioral pattern that is beneficial to us for our entire lives. So now if you're if you are a Christian, then you have the tools for this already. You already have the tools for this. So Emma sees where I'm going. If you have the tools for it, why is it that we don't do it? That is why even if exercise was in pill form, not that many would take it because it requires even at that level discipline. And that's what the soldier has. It doesn't get entangled in these different civilian affairs. What a farmer has is discipline. What an athlete has is discipline. And discipline is not just some innate thing that people have. It is worked on. Again and again and again, repetition. And so today, I'm, I'm not going to give you a, a, a bunch of different cool things. I'm going to just give you some practicals. I just, I just want to give you some practicals because, of course, I could talk about fitness all day long. I, I legit do it every day. It's my job, right? But these practicals, and I write these down, the first one is make a, a SMART goal. We've heard of these a lot, and sometimes I almost get sick of the word. However, it works. SMART, and what I mean by this is it, it's an acronym, specific. Your goal needs to be specific. I want to lose weight. How much? It should be measurable. Where you are now and where you want to be, you should be able to measure this. Meaning there's got to be some sort of a number involved. If I wear a size six dress, not me, but if you wear a size six dress and you want to get to a two, that's measurable, right? Brothers, if you wear a, a size 40-something pants and you want to get down to a 32, I don't know, but it's measurable. It should be achievable, meaning, meaning with the amount of time, the measurable stats, the whatever, if it's specific, you should be able to achieve it. This also goes into the next one, the next letter, which is our realistic. I am sorry. If you have, if you have pre-existing uh, pre conditions, you know, maybe you have diabetes, maybe you have something that is going on, maybe you have some past injuries, maybe you are currently unable to do something because your body limits you. You have to be realistic. As you get older, you are just, it's just going to continue. That function is just going to wear down. There is no, you can't work, you can't outwork time. I'm sorry. But what you can do is understand that your body does have limitations, and so you should be realistic. I am going to do what I can with the body that I have, because I'm sorry, you can't trade it in for another one. Right? Which means, and so this is a, a different thing, and so for everybody, you need to, you got to learn how to be a little more confident in your body, right? Because let's be real, and not everybody's going to have the same sort of situation. So be realistic for you. And that's a, honestly, I, mean, I don't, I don't, I hate when people come in to, you know, see me for training, and they, you know, they want to look like, I, I don't know, like a runway model. Right. I'm like, I'm you should have went to the plastic surgeon. I can't do that for you. No, I don't actually say that, but you get what I'm you get. You get what I mean. I can't help you with that sort of. That's not my area. You know what I'm saying now? Great. Cool. You look like you look like one already. Well, that's awesome. You know, still be healthy. Just don't, you know, check your behavior. Cool. And the last one, it needs to be time bound. You have to see this happening within a, within a realistic time span. I want to lose weight. I don't know how much or in what amount of time. I don't know. Just maybe in some point in my life. You're not really real. You're not, you're not acting real about this goal. This goal is not that important to you. Right? That's the first one. Make a smart goal. 
Second one, eat. Oh, sorry. Yeah, eat enough food. Please don't starve yourself. Eat enough food. Get enough sleep. Don't, don't, don't neglect these other two parts of it. This is not, fitness is not just moving around and working now. You got to sleep and you got to eat. I, I, I hate when people go into the gym and I'm, I'm tired. Why? There's a reason. You didn't eat. You ain't sleeping. I can't do nothing about that. Develop a plan, right? So the SMART goal is great, but you got to figure out how am I going to get here? How am I going to get to po from point A to point B? Maybe I need to get a gym membership. Maybe I need some different things in place so that I can get to my goal. The last one, have someone keep you accountable. Remember, this is similar to discipleship, right? So in Christianity, you got somebody keeping you accountable. You should, right? And so, therefore, the same thing should be happening in your own fitness. If you believe that you want to get up every day and go to the gym, if I work at a gym and I don't like getting up every day and go to the gym. There are some, everybody goes through those days. You have to have that accountability and the discipline enough to go through it even when you don't want to. Have that accountability. Or get a trainer. I'm sorry. So many people go to the gym. They have no idea what they're doing. A lot of times that's why we don't go, right? We feel like I just don't know what to do. Okay, well, here you go. Just like you research your Bible, you need to research some exercises. You need to do what's your part so that you know what you're doing. I don't go into the gym without a plan. I understand what it is that I want to achieve. The things that I am able to do because of this discipline, I practice at it every single day that I'm in the gym. And so a trainer is gonna, is gonna help, trust me. I mean, if you're not an expert in that area, then get somebody who is an expert in the area. And again, do your research. Don't just get some bozo off the street, I'm sorry. I see way too many people getting some trainer some Joe Schmo and got them doing some stuff that they have never done in their lives, nor will they do in their regular life. And then they're like, I tried the trainer and I didn't get results. Well, because you went to a bad trainer. You went to somebody who wasn't truly a Christian. You see what I'm saying? No, 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 you ain't got to hire me, but I'm, I'm, just, I'm just saying this is something that you have to have in your mind because just if you, if you want to go to heaven, you make sure that you understand what it is the Bible is saying, right? You're not just taking any random old street preacher's jargon, right? So why would you do that for your body either? I'm going to just take some random Instagram model's workout. I see this stuff all the time. I'm going to take this random Instagram model's workout because they look good and they're already doing some. No, it, 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 it doesn't correlate. Or I'm going to do some CrossFit because it looks really intense and those people are in shape. Well, I'm sorry, you work at a desk job. That doesn't, that doesn't correlate. When will you ever use this skill? So all in all, this is about your behavior. Do these things, and these, honestly, these are, these are things that you can do every day that will transfer over to the rest of your life. Don't shortcut yourself. Understand that this needs to be a change in mindset, not just something you do. I love you all. To God be the glory. Hey. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Um, okay, so Okay, so I'm going to start with a scripture from 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20, <laughs> similar to what Emma, Emma said. Um Okay. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from, from God? You are not your own. You are bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your, with your bodies. 
Um, so with that said, eating a healthy diet is not about strict limitations, staying unrealistically thin or depriving yourself of the food you love. It's more about um, feeling your best, having more energy, improving your health and boosting your mood. Um, so my first point is drinking water uh, daily is important. Um, okay, sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so in Daniel 1, it says, Daniel then said to the guard whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, Please test your servants for 10 days. Give us nothing but vegetables to eat and water to drink. Then compare our, our appearance with that of the young men who eat the royal food and test your servants in accordance with what you see. At the end of the 10 days, they looked healthier and better nourished than any of the young men who ate the royal food. So with that said, drinking enough water significantly affects energy levels and brain function, helps prevent helps prevent and treat headaches, um, relieves constipation, helps treat kidney infections and kidney stones, and can even aid in we uh, weight loss. Something that has been helpful for me is um, I, sorry, <laughs> carry around uh, a 32 ounce bottle of water, and then I just refill it two or three times throughout the day. So it keeps me um, disciplined with how much I need to, to drink. Um, antioxidants. Antioxidants help with decrease, uh, decreasing oxidative stress um, that the body produces as a reaction to environmental factors, stress levels, lack of sleep, and or a poor diet. And oxidative stress has been linked to heart disease, cancer, arthritis, stroke, and respiratory diseases, immune deficiency, emphysema, Parkinson's disease, and other inflammatory conditions. Um, research demonstrates that inflammatory diets um, reduce markers of inflammation in the body and the risk of chronic conditions. So a 2016 review found that the Mediter Mediterranean diet reduced C-reactive protein, which is a test that indi indicates inflammation in the body, um, by 20% and overall heart disease risk by 30%. Um, just for the sake of time, I didn't put this in there, but if anybody wants my list of inflammatory foods, I'd be happy to help with that. Um, and then um, with, with uh, some of those foods on my list are fruits and vegetables. We absolutely need to eat more fruits and vegetables. Um, adults should be eating one and a half to two cups of fruits and two to three cups of vegetables per day. Compared with people who said they eat they ate just two servings of fruits or vegetables each day. People who ate five servings per day had a 12% lower risk of uh, death from um, heart disease or stroke, a 10% lower risk of death from cancer, and a 35% lower risk of death from respiratory disease. Um, and unfortunately, only 10% of adults are eating the recommended daily of uh, daily serving of vegetables each day, and only 12.3% are eating enough fruit. Um, so one suggestion to easily input these fruits and vegetables into your diet, the ones that you don't necessarily like, um, is just to add them into a smoothie. I do this with my kids all the time. They do not like spinach. <laughs> um, and then at least you're, it still tastes good because you're adding other fruits and vegetables that you like and you're getting the nutrients that you need. And then eventually, little by little, you can um, increase those fruits and vegetables into certain dishes. Um, I baked banana walnut muffins as cupcakes last year for my kids, one of them, uh, birthday party last year. And the kids at some of the kids at the birthday party actually asked for seconds. They had no idea. Um, of course, they got the parents' approval for the nuts. <laughs> but um, so if you're consistent, your body will soon adjust to the changes that you're making. Um, meal planning can also help you stay on track with eating what you need to eat and also avoiding um, the food that you shouldn't be eating. And it's more cost effective. Um, and then don't just read the labels. There's labels um, on food that are not accurate. 
So for example, um, I see a lot of like seedless watermelon or seedless lemons that are non-GMO, which is not the case. Um, so it's essential to so it's essential to read the ingredients and research the benefits or lack thereof of each ingredient. A little time consuming, but once you like input that into your daily, um, you know, your daily life, it's it gets easier. Um, so Ecclesiastes. 3 verses 13 says that each of them may eat and drink and find satisfaction in all their toil. This is the gift from of God. Uh, with that said, um, we should avoid processed meats such as hot dogs, bacon, deli, deli meat. Um, we should, <laughs> we should, um, <laughs> um, so we should limit or completely avoid red meat. I was going to put statistics in there, but that was a little um, time consuming. Um, added salt and sugar. We could eat fruit for um, you know, sugar. We, we don't need to add salt on popcorn. We can have it plain. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, processed carbs, such as white bread, baked goods, processed, <laughs> processed snacks, such as chips and cookies. <laughs> um, <and laughs> um, pre-made desserts, such as ice cream, candy, and gluten, um, should be avoided. And you should have satisfaction in doing so. <laughs> um... So, so 1 uh, Corinthians 10.13 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. So you don't have to go over to that table. You can keep talking to another disciple or you could grab something else it's not um it's it's not the end of the world um so with that with that said try eating six, uh, six smaller meals a day rather than hit three heavier meals so this will prevent your metabolism from slowing down and your blood sugar has a better chance of being stabilized um, however, it's pretty essential that the food that you're, uh, the amount of food that you're eating, uh, consuming, uh, will make a difference as well. So portion control is important regardless on how many meals you're eating. Um, and perhaps avoid eating within three hours before bedtime. Um, depending what your eating habits look like during the day, eating close to bedtime could potentially cause weight gain, heartburn, indigestion, etc. Um, and then also reach out to another disciple who's struggling with the same temptations. Hold each other accountable. Provide support uh, for, for each other as well. Um, so my last scripture is 1 Corinthians 10.31, which is, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Thank you. <laughs> Hey, man, guys, give it up for uh, Isaiah and Sarah one more time. Thank you, guys. So I think uh, the main thing I took away from Isaiah's lesson is that uh, health is about a behavior change. You know, working out is a behavior change. Fitness is a behavior change. Everything revolving around health is a behavior change. So it takes effort. It takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. But one day at a time, and you start to see results. One day at a time, you implement different things that Sarah was talking about. It's a lot. She talked about a lot. As, you know, if you're not doing anything healthy, then what she said was like well, probably overwhelming, like drinking from a fire hose. She said a lot of stuff. Implement one thing at a time, and before you know it, you'll be a healthier person. There's a cool app called uh, Yuka. I don't know if you use it. Sarah, do you use the, do you use the app Yuka? Have you ever heard of that? Yuka? No? Okay. Well, anyways, most of us have smartphones. Uh, y U K A. Basically, what you what what you can do, and this kind of 
this is a catch-22 because when you're using it, you're scanning a barcode, which obviously means that it's probably something processed for the most part. But at least what the app does is it, it shows you what's in the thing that's good, and then it shows you all the negative things. So basically, if you scan it, it'll show you a list of all the bad things in it and tell you basically if you should not eat it. So at least that helps with a lot of things. Uh, it's a cool app. Um, and obviously, you can just take that to the grocery store and be scanning stuff and just tell yourself if you shouldn't eat it or not. Um, and then, yeah, I think um, some of the main things, uh, you know, like I said, Sarah said a lot of stuff, but just take take three things that you can apply, that you can start applying, and then obviously have the list of other things that you should talk about as well. But just apply three things for this week, whether it's meal prepping, whether it's, uh, you know, cutting out food before you go to sleep, that is a big one, um, that affects your sleep a lot, um, or any other of those things that she talked about. Just apply some of those things, but stick to them. That's the main thing. Stick to what you're doing. Be consistent. If you're not consistent, you're going to fall off the wagon, and you're not going to do anything, and before you know it, you're going to be back eating potato chips. It's just, it's the truth. I've been there. I've been there. I can, I can speak from experience. So with that being said, guys, we're going to take a quick five-minute break, and then we'll come back with a song. We'll dive into the second part of this lesson. <laughs> No, but my, my shoulder was actually cracking and popping. I was like, dang, I was like, this is, it's getting real. I was like, I, I work out and it's getting real around here. I was like, I got the joint. What's going on here? I was like, stuff's getting real. Amen. All right, well, let me turn my time around so I don't talk too long. First things first, because last class was time management, and I blew that one. We all, we, we blew that one big time. Amen. Well, let me turn this on, guys. Um, cool. Uh, well, when I think about um, living a healthy lifestyle, a lot of things do come to mind. Obviously, working out, you know, drinking plenty of water, uh, eating right, eating healthy, you know, plenty of vegetables, fruits, all that good stuff, uh, taking supplements, you know, vitamins, whatever it may be. All those different things that you think about when you think of health, right? The general things that you see, that's health, right? But I think uh, one of the most overlooked, crucial parts of our health is actually our sleep. I do believe that 100%. I believe that with all my heart. Now, I, was, I mentioned earlier to a brother that there is some, there's a category of people out there that don't need much sleep. They're in the zeroth percentile. Frank is one of them. <laughs> there's zero, zero percent of people, which is, it's basically all, it's this tiny little number rounded up to a, a, a percentage and it, it equals zero percent. But those people can run well off of five hours or less of sleep, and have no cognitive decline at all. There's a few people like that. Maybe there's a few others in here. Amen. Davis is one of them too. Amen. We've got a few zero percentiles here. Four hours of sleep. See, I can't do that. I will, I will be messed up. Crystal ball, amen, bro. Amen. God, God bless you. I'm, I don't know what to say. I don't know what else to say. But I do think that uh, sleep is a very, very overlooked part of our health that we don't take, uh, most, we don't take into consideration enough. And um, so not just like, you know, not just like sleeping, because anybody can go to sleep, obviously, but quality sleep, like getting a quality night's rest so that you can actually be an effective disciple of Jesus. Amen. We all want to be an effective disciple of Jesus. Um, but I spoke with a few brothers this past week, and uh, they were describing to me their, their lack, their, their trouble falling asleep or staying asleep, a few different people. And I was like, okay, well, bro, well, describe to me what your nightly routine is like. What's your pattern's like? What do you do? You know, like, what, what does it go? And then they did, and I was like, okay, amen, amen. We, are, we, we can put the puzzle pieces together. You know, it, it doesn't take a doctor or a genius for sure. Uh, but it does take a little bit of knowledge. Yeah, I will say that. You have to know how to get, how to fall asleep, which is weird to think about, but you actually have to know how your body physiologically reacts to certain things. So I just want to talk about a couple of few practical things so that, that you guys can hopefully go home and get a well night's rest over this whole weekend, wake up on Sunday bright and early to worship God, and then take that with you for throughout the next week. Uh, so the first thing I want to talk about is uh, your caffeine intake. Who here drinks coffee or energy drinks or something else? Okay, well, the, major the majority of the room, for sure. The majority of the room drinks caffeine. Now, to, uh, or tea. Yeah, tea's not bad. Tea's not bad. Um, but I would say, you know, I would say the majority of Western culture probably consumes some sort of caffeine on their day-to-day -day basis, whether it's one cup or whether it's two cups, whatever it may be. But uh, to measure a, a substance like caffeine, 
scientists use something called half-life. We use this in the medical field too, in the, on the ambulance, because you have to know what a half-life is of a medication to figure out how long it's going to be in your blood and in your system. And so caffeine's half-life is approximately four to six hours. So say, for instance, you drink 100 milligrams, that's maybe a bigger dose of coffee, but say you, for instance, you drink 100 milligrams of caffeine at 4 p.m. What that means is that by 10 p.m., you will still have 50 milligrams of caffeine in your body. So what does that do to your sleep? Well, caffeine, it basically blocks the adenosine receptors in your brain. That's not basically, that's what it does. It blocks the adenosine receptors in your brain, and adenosine is responsible for your sleep or for your drive to sleep. So basically, you won't have any drive to sleep because you've drank 100 milligrams of caffeine at 4 p.m., and therefore you still have a half-life of 50 milligrams in your brain, and so you still won't be tired by the time bedtime rolls around. So the, the practical there is don't consume, you have to be mindful of how much caffeine you consume, first and foremost, but don't consume any caffeine. If you're going to consume caffeine, some people might be against caffeine, but if you're going to consume caffeine, at least don't consume it after like noon. And if you're going to do that, then at least consume a tiny bit and be mindful of the half-life thing. You can actually just do the math in your head. You can figure, you know, four to six hours for caffeine. I'm drinking however much caffeine right now, and then therefore, by the time bedtime hits, it's going to be still in my system or not. And so you can just do the math in your head. It's simple math. It doesn't take a genius. You know, use your phone. Use your calculator. Um, but yeah, that's your practical for the caffeine. Just watch your caffeine intake because that does really, really heavily affect your sleep. Two. Your lights, lighting. This is a big one that most people don't realize. I'm like, dude, how do you expect to go to sleep when you have the TV blaring, you have your phone turned on full brightness, and then like all these other things that are stimulating all you? I, did, it, I mean, to me, it doesn't make sense, but to some people, they just don't know. You know, like re in the reality, a lot of people don't know how much light affects your sleep. And so, melatonin. We've all heard of it. Melatonin is a hormone that regulates your sleep-wake cycle, or your circadian rhythm. It's basically the pattern that goes around every 24 hours in your body to figure out when it's going to start getting tired and then when you're going to wake up in the morning. So you can train that. You can train that rhythm through pattern, through behavior patterns. Uh, but melatonin is that hormone that's going to affect that. So lighting, basically, if you have your phone all the way up, there's something called uh, night mode, actually, on iPhones, probably on Android, too. I use this, and you can actually have it turn on automatically, so you don't have to be a genius to even do it. You just set it and forget it. But there's a thing called night mode. What that does is it basically makes your phone orange instead of like this all this blue light. What blue light does is it blocks melatonin in your brain from producing. And so if you have the light in your face you, and then you can't sleep, that's why. Because all that light is affecting your brain. And so what you have to do at night, you have to be super intentional about your, uh, your bedtime routine first. But what you should do, what I do, uh, and this is probably overboard, but I, I do it just because I care about my sleep. Uh, I literally have a smart bulb in my bedroom just in the lamp. It, does, it, was like it was like 10 bucks, you know, a smart bulb. I have it, uh, I, I turn it on all the way low, all the way down on an orange mode. And I turn my, my phone's already on night mode, so because it does that automatically, because I said to that, which you can do as well. Um, and then I make sure that all of my other lights and stuff are super, super dim, so that I know if I'm in a bright room, I'm going to be up all night. And so you have to think about those things now that you know, if you didn't know already. You have to think about those things like, okay, why am I not tired right now? Well, I'm just sitting in a bright room with the TV on, like with all this stimulation. So you have to, you have to think about that. That's, that's the reality of it. You're not going to be tired. It's, it's just science. It's facts. And so that's your, uh, your homework number two. Turn off the lights or dim the lights. Turn your phone on a night mode, automation, something like that. We got all this smart technology. We might as well use it, right? We might as well be smart with it. We might not, I don't want to be done with a smartphone. We might as well use a smartphone. So just turn your stuff down on automatic, you know, night mode, all those different things, and use that to your advantage so you can actually get some good sleep. That's the reality of it. And so that's your practical number two. Do that for yourself if you haven't already, and it will, trust me, it will tremendously increase. First and foremost, you'll fall asleep you'll actually be tired at night. <laughs> and then you'll actually fall asleep way faster. And so just take that and uh, you'll thank me later. Amen, like Isaiah says. Um, a couple other things, like actually Sarah mentioned earlier, uh, eating before bed. If you eat, like three hours is the recommended that you don't eat before bed. Three to four hours. Um, and it depends on what you eat. But Eating in general, you probably just shouldn't do it. Basically, what it's going to do is just slow your metabolism down. Your body's not going to be able to absorb and break down and do all the stuff that it's supposed to do with food if you just go to sleep. Now, the caveat is that most people will think, oh, well, if I just eat a giant meal before bed, I'll get tired and I'll fall asleep. That's true. 
you probably will, especially if it's fatty, because fatty food, all the blood just goes to your stomach, and then all of a sudden, you literally just get tired and fall asleep. It's called a food coma. That's probably true. You will. But then your quality of sleep will be horrible. And you're going to wake up at probably like 1 or 2 a.m., extremely thirsty. And uh, <laughs> especially if you've had a ton of sodium, extremely thirsty and just struggling for your life. Don't eat three to four hours before bed. If you can. If you can. I think that we can all do that. We can all eat earlier on in the day. And it would help your sleep a lot more. Um, room, room temperature. Room temperature is another really, really big one. And most people don't. Yeah. Keep it cold. Some people like to sleep in the heat. Amen. Maybe you're a different type of creature, but the majority of human beings fall asleep naturally. Your body temperature drops when it, when it starts to get dark. I don't know if this was like some sort of evolutionary thing, like as far as humans, they, with God, of course. Yeah, well, of course. That's what I mean. But yes, anyways, when, when, we, when we used to be outside a long time ago and the sun went down and the moon went out, that's when melatonin would start producing. That's why we didn't have the phone, the lights on, everything like that. That's when melatonin would start producing. And then also the temperature would drop, so your body temperature would drop and you would start to get tired. That's what it was, that's what we're wired to be. And so uh, if the room temperature is also cold, then that, a that aids in producing melatonin again. And so that actually helps a lot. If you uh, notice that you have trouble sleeping, open up the window for you know a little while or just keep it cracked all night. I keep it cracked all night, basically. Um, we also have AC units, but you know I don't use that right now because it's cold out. So just crack your window, uh, and it, you would be surprised at how fast you fall asleep if it's actually a little cool, not freezing, of course. And you know, not if you don't have a blanket, then you know, you know, be smart. Uh, I don't want anybody dying like in their bed of hypothermia, but uh, you know, be smart about. It. But you you would be surprised on how much of a big difference that makes in your uh, sleep. And so um, those were just, like, what time is there? Let's see. Oh, I'm okay. I'm, uh, I got to wrap it up. Okay, I'm done. Uh, but those are just a couple, those are just a couple things. I think we overlook so much in our health is our sleep. And so I hope that those practicals help you. Please implement them. And uh, I'm going to give Emma a chance to speak a little bit here. Hi guys. Um, thank you so much, Sarah and Isaiah for speaking and Dylan, of course. Um, we're going to have a little Q&A session after I share for a minute. So if you have questions on any of the topics that uh, we all spoke about today, then start thinking of them and we'll have everyone come up so we can answer your questions. But I just wanted to kind of round out this um, session with some very like, okay, very basic practical steps because we heard a lot of things, but it can sometimes feel overwhelming. And I, I can relate to having a goal I want to reach um, and seeing like how much it's going to take to get there and then just quitting because I don't know what the practical step is to do. So I love, I think it was Dylan who mentioned er earlier that we should have a mindset change. So I want us to think about when you first studied the Bible, what did your mindset need to be in order to get right with God? Does anyone actually want to do whatever it takes? Okay. Anyone else? Dylan? A learner's mindset? Yes. Stop trying to have control of everything. Absolutely. These are all actually great answers. Um, and we also needed to have a repentant mindset. In order to make our relationship okay with God, what do we need to do? Repent. <laughs> and so let's have a repentant mindset when we're thinking about our health goals as well. If you truly want something, you will do what it takes, whatever it's required to get it. Um, in the same way we did that when we wanted to get baptized, when we wanted to have a relationship with God. Um, so I want to read Proverbs 4, verses 26 to 27. And it reads, Give careful thought to the paths that you, for your feet, and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or to the left. Keep your foot from evil. Okay, so again, um, when we want something, whether it be a relationship with God, a promotion at work, our health goal, um, we have to give careful thought 
follow the instructions, the plans, whatever it is that we need to get there. So everyone in this room probably has a different health goal that they want to reach. Some of us, it may be a physical um, goal that we need to reach. Maybe it's a sleep goal. Maybe it is um, an eating goal. Um, and so I want to kind of just take us back to how are we going to do step one? Like, what is that going to look like daily in our lives? What do we need to do? Um, okay. So some practicals that I want to share. Um, okay. So you may not, you may not believe this, but I ran a full marathon last year. <laughs> I sure did. <laughs> and I, I am not like naturally athletic. I don't have a athletic genes. I wasn't blessed in that way. However, this is a goal that I had for so long. And I was like, okay, I'm going to figure out exactly what it's going to take for me to run this full marathon. Um, and so what you do, the plan, if you're literally be a beginner, um, which I, I had run a couple of half marathons, but they were like way before this. And I hadn't run in a very long time. So I was like at square one. Um, and so when you're at square one, what they tell you to do is Day one is like you run maybe for like five minutes. Like <laughs> that's it. So day one, it was like, okay, warm up, walk five minutes, run five minutes, walk five minutes. And that was the workout. And I was like, how am I supposed to run a marathon by doing this? But it took um starting there and then it like builds off of day one. But I was like, there's no way I can get from day one to like full marathon. I was like, it, was this plan a joke? Like, who made this for me? Um, in Hebrews 5, verse 14, it says, But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So this scripture is specifically a, a warning against falling away. Um, and before this uh, particular verse, it says, Though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Um, but we can apply the same understanding to a lot of different areas of our lives. Um, and so I needed to start with milk at my marathon training. But what does it say? It says by constant use uh, do we get to move on to solid food. And so by constantly maybe running my five minutes for a week and then moving up to like 10, 15, by constant use did I get to move up to solid food. I started running like for like hours at a time, just straight through. And I was like, I don't know how I ended up here. There's like a moment where you're like, how did I end up here just from starting with that five minutes? Um, and so guys, I just want to encourage you to pick what is your five minute running goal that you're going to do. Um, for example, like relate this to your health goal. So for example, if you want to drink more water, there's a lot of, um, everyone says to drink a gallon of water. I tried that. You guys know everyone recommends drinking a gallon of water a day. Like you've heard that before. How many people here do that? <laughs> How many people here do this every single day? <laughs> Sarah? I see like hands going like this, like, I don't believe you guys. <laughs> no one confidently said, yes, I do it every day. Okay, Sarah. Okay, Sarah Bannister drinks a gallon of water every single day. Yeah, I tried this. I tried this. I bought the gallon water bottle that you carry around. That thing is heavy. It lasted me like two weeks. I did it for two weeks. <laughs> but it's because I was going, yeah, it lasted two weeks and then I stopped. I went from drinking maybe like even a quarter gallon of water to trying to drink one full gallon of water a day. Like that's not, that's not realistic. It's not going to work if we're just trying to jump straight into our end goal. And so what did I do? I bought, you guys see me carrying around the like mason jar of water. That's my water bottle now <laughs> because I started carrying around something that holds more water than what I usually would drink. So if I used to run out of water in my smaller water bottle and I couldn't refill it. I wasn't drinking water during that duration of like not getting to water. So now I carry around something that's more feasible, more practical, and I always have water with me. Um, so just things to get you started thinking like, how is this going to become constant use so that we can move on to solid food? So I want you to just start with thinking about what is your 
milk in this instance. Um, don't get overwhelmed by, we heard so many great, great practicals today. Um, I know a lot of people did not want to hear the idea of giving up bacon. <laughs> I didn't want to hear that. <laughs> but what does it look like to maybe just start eating less of these things? What does it look like to just start at square one? Start with your five minute run. Start with your um, mason jar of water. And by constant use, will we move on to solid food? So this is all just forming habits. Um, the last thing I want to share is um, habits are formed through repetition. So I just want to share a quick scripture um, in Deuteronomy 6. So just to give context of this scripture, um, it's basically uh, the preparation to going into the promised land. And so the Israelites are about to cross over the Jordan uh, to take the land that God had prepared for them. Um, and so one element of this scripture I want you guys to focus on is that the success of uh, the nation of Israel depends on whether or not they would use repetition to embed God's way into their entire existence. So Deuteronomy 6 verse 5 says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today and are to be upon your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you are at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on your door frames of your houses and on your gates. Okay, so we see here that maintaining a relationship with God requires repetition. Um, God's literally telling them, take these words with you wherever you go. Tie them, uh, bind them to you, tell them to your kids, write them on the door. And so um, we already know that we, our relationship with God is a daily walk. Um, Psalm 1 verses 1 through 2, I'll just read for time's sake. Um, the last scripture says, but whose delight is is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. We understand this in discipleship. A lot of people have talked about this. We understand repetition in discipleship. Our relationship with God is repetitious. Um, and so as God's words need to be, you know, repeated as we apply them to our life day in and day out, um, we need to have repetition in multiple areas of our lives, in our health. Um, how can we be repetitious with these habits that we want to form uh, so that habits can form? Okay, so um, just want to give you guys something to think about. Um, think about, sorry, looking for my note. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so think about how much repetition of any kind has shaped your behavior, both good and bad. So think about um, the repeated bad choices that you've made and the problems that they've led to. And then think about the good choices, um, the good repeated behaviors and the improvements that they have led to. Um, and so just as an exercise to leave you guys with, think about um, specifically one bad repeti rep repetitive <laughs> choice that you've made and one good uh, repetitive choice that you've made and then look at the outcome of those things and so what did it take um, like why was one good and one bad and so just think about those things so um, I'm out of time but I just want to leave you guys with those hopefully they're helpful practicals and we will definitely send notes as well so you guys can get all this information so thank you so much All right, uh, what we're going to do now, is, so just for the sake of time, uh, we'll just have like, if you guys have any questions about literally anything that anybody spoke about, we'll just have like a quick five minutes or so. Uh, feel free to ask away. Um, and then we'll have whoever you want to direct it to or, you know, we can answer those questions. So go ahead, Michelle. That's all. <laughs> Question. No, no, it wasn't, it wasn't, um, I mean, for my kids, they're like already kind of adjusted to healthy food. So I, I, I think that I'm more, um, interested in making 
because whenever my kid has a birthday party, like I, I, they, we, they usually will teach them. Being in, it, you know, to order it. Um, so when my kids have their own birthday parties, I just make their food. Um, so, uh, you know, basically they, um, I find that a lot of kids don't like nuts. So for that particular birthday party, I asked permission from their parents. They said it was okay and they didn't, you know, they didn't complain or anything. And I didn't have like any food left over. Uh -huh. So, yeah. I grinded them first. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Um, I mean, there's plenty of oils that can help with that, but um, obviously diet has to come first. Um, but I mean, like in particular, my, I guess it depends. Lavender is not good for kind of messes with like hormones for boys. I don't know why it works well for Michaela. Um, but cedarwood, frankincense, um, I, I could go on. There's like, there's like 10, I, I could message you. Yeah, yeah. It is good stuff, though. Be, to be real, scent, scent has a big uh, impact on a lot of different things, on your mood and everything like that. Uh, Raven? Why? <laughs> <laughs> like, why? Um, so there's a few reasons, but I, I didn't go like heavy into this because I'm a plant-based eater, but I know that it's... Um, you know, it causes a few like conditions within the body. It's very acidic. It you want your body to be alkaline, um, and meat, red meat is one of those things that are very acidic. So that's the main thing I really. Sorry. <laughs> Amen. Like Isaiah said, you have to also be a Berean and do your own research as well. But yes, thank please, you. Yes. please. Uh, Ro, yeah. No, no, I was just, I thought someone else raised their hand earlier before you, but yeah, go ahead, Ro. Yeah, yeah. That, that was your question. That, did you forget my name? <laughs> so, okay, I was going to say, okay, is it true that red may be the best way of breaking the fast? Can I answer this? I think that you're talking well, about intermediate fasting. I think oh. that. Yeah, like uh, like a, a it like I think breaking it, your sleep fast. It depends right? yeah. on the person. So the first thing, like I don't eat breakfast in the morning. I I I work out first and then I eat. Um, but so it depends on your your cycle or whatever you do. Um, and then, obviously, depending on how heavy it may be, that might not be the best thing. You want to start your morning off bad? Eat a bunch of donuts, mm -hmm. right? Eat a bunch of sugar. That's going to make you, your your day is just going to go horrible. So it's obvious. Yeah, just just don't choose. You can Breakfast is fine. It depends on what the rest of your day looks like and what you did the night before. So it's really just about what is your, your habits. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Emma. Um, yeah, just to add to that, it is super dependent on the person. Um, I know that also just speaking about fast, like um, women generally like shouldn't do intermittent fasting as much as like it's better for men. Um, but also like if you have anxiety, eating a large breakfast is actually really good for you. So it's very, very dependent on who you are, even like your sex and just a lot of different factors, so maybe do some other research on that too. Yeah. Amen. Yep. Awesome. Uh, CJ. Okay. Challenge me, bro. Come on. Sometimes I even cause you to eat. So, who would you suggest? That's a good question. I like that one. Yeah. That's, that's what one. I'm doing right now. So this is Eat another three part. Chip. Huh? Eat right. Three I, had, I legit okay, so I today. So this is a part of your meal prep does wonders, mm -hmm. right? Because it's not just that you gotta eat a lot, but you gotta eat consistently. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, for, like for myself, I eat five times a day, and they're big meals. But I don't, I don't eat at 10 p.m. or something, right? Um, because I try and get as bro. I'm answering the question. Watch out. Um, <laughs> um, so what I what would be the best? Now, of course, it depends on your body and the amount of work that you're doing, right? So for you, if you're in sports, right? So you can get away. So understand this, that you can't do this for your entire life, right? But because of your lifestyle, if you're an athlete, you can have some of those more high energy foods. You do need different carbohydrates because that allows you to perform, right? So you want to perform, you want to put on weight. That's what you want to do. You've got to have those type of high energy foods. This, so it really depends on, so yeah, you want to put on weight. Maybe you burn a lot of calories. You need more food, high energy food. Um, and you need to be eating consistently. Yeah, uh, just to add to that real quick. Um, yeah, what he said as far as the meal prepping and all that stuff goes is great. But there's also different foods that will affect your sleep more than others or uh, will benefit your sleep more than others. So I would do some research as far as on your own, you know, your own time to look into that as well. So uh, Marcel, and then we're just going to take like maybe one more person. So. Oh, perfect. Perfect. Um, my personal, I so three to four times a week is great. If you think that you're going to go to the gym six days a week when you have been doing zero, it's not going to happen, right? So not, but I, I myself do three times a week and I do full body. Um, this allows you to hit everything consistently um so that you're not missing any any parts right um but so for somebody who's just starting off and this is what i do for all of my clients is three times three to four times a week um because it gives you a break in between now if your behavior is that you can't take a day off then you do you do that but it also depends on the intensity of your exercises yep okay so if I'm in the gym and I'm only there three times a week, my workouts are somewhat intense because I've got to get what I need in these three days. Um, if you're able, if your schedule allows for it, so this is also what you have to do is you have to understand your schedule, right? And your fitness level right now. So if you can handle those things where you can be in the gym five, six days a week, then do it, right? But if you cannot and you know, like, oh, I'm going to be sore, I'm going to be this and that, right? So then... You, you've got to plan. So take your own schedule into account, the intensity of the exercise. And is that last? I just said it. You said schedule, intensity, and... Uh, and your own fitness your level. Fitness level. And your own yep. fitness level. So yep. take those three into account. And then from there, you can accurately uh, determine, or of course, you can ask a question like that. So I say three times a week, three to four times a week. Yep. Amen. Good advice. Good advice. And if you're going to start getting into working out, please stretch. Stretch in the, stretch in the those stretches I yeah, just showed yeah, you. Yeah. Stretch in the I'm morning. not even joking. You know, look into stretches that'll expedite that that that'll you, you won't get into excuses because you're sore. You know, you'll actually be repairing correctly and everything like and that. And you won't so, be yeah. injured. And you won't be injured. Yes, you exactly. So you won't be injured. Uh, actually, guys, we'll just wrap up there since it's uh, past nine. Um, but as far as the homework goes, is uh, it'll be sent out via the Battle Buddy system that we put in place last time. Uh, if you're visiting for the first time and you aren't enrolled into that Battle Buddy system, uh, just you might not get a partner depending on how many people enroll. But basically what we did as far as the Battle Buddy system goes is it was a, uh, it was a partner relationship where you can hold each other accountable. And uh, so I, I partnered up each person in that system, and then I've been sending out homework and text messages, obviously encouraging and spurring, spurring everybody on. Um, and so if you're not in that and you want to be in that, just reach out to whoever invited you out today. Uh, I'll add you, but I can't promise that you'll get a partner. But what I would do if you don't have a partner, I would reach out to a close friend Share the goal that you have or the homework that you have with them and ask them to hold you accountable for it. And then with that, you will be able to be held accountable. But you have to be open about your goals or about the homework to actually get that accountability. So reach out to a close friend and uh, do that. But anyways, guys, 
Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you got a lot from that. And uh, we are going to sing one last song, and then we'll be dismissed.